Here's a critical question. Is CO2 capable of causing global warming? That's what underlies all of these discussions. And that's, that's the main contention of the, uh, of the whole climate uh, change debate. Uh, what you may not be aware of is that there's almost no CO2 in the atmosphere. It's very small. It's 39 one thousandths of 1%. One if we take a bucket of air out of this room and measure it, we will get 39 one thousandths of 1% one CO2. It's almost nothing. If you double nothing, you've still got nothing. Since 1950s, since this big escalation of emission of CO2, the composition of the atmosphere, the, the CO2 composition, has increased by only eight one thousandths of one percent. That's almost as close to nothing as you can get. You can triple that and you still have nothing. There is not enough CO2 in the atmosphere to do much of anything. And then you add to that that CO2 accounts for only 3.6 percent of the greenhouse effect. Only 3 percent of the greenhouse gas effect is CO2. 95 percent is water vapor. So the, the point of this is that CO2 by itself is incapable of significant global warming. That's the bottom line. I'll say it again. CO2 by itself is incapable of causing significant global warming. And so how do we get these, these, um, these projections in? And we get it because um, the climate modelers who, um, who depend on computer models rather than real data uh, for their conclusions um, have decided that if CO2 goes up, water vapor will also increase. And as water vapor increases, we kick in this 95% of the greenhouse effect. So virtually all of the temperature increase during the warm period we had in, in, in 77 to, um, to 98, virtually all of that they would account for by water vapor in their models, not CO2, water vapor. So the question is, is water vapor increasing? Well, here's water vapor. Here's water vapor going back to 1947. Water vapor, if water vapor is increasing as CO2 goes up, and that's what's causing, that's what's levering the global warming, then uh, you might have an argument for, the, for their models. But water vapor is actually decreased, has actually decreased since 1947. Look at the downward trend. Down is less water vapor in the atmosphere. And these are various levels of the atmosphere. So in order for their models to be correct, they must show that there has been an increase in water vapor in the atmosphere, and it's just the opposite. There is less water vapor in the atmosphere now as CO2 has gone up, not more, and so their models are totally invalid. Their models will not work without an increase in water vapor. There's another effect of CO2, uh, which is called a saturation effect. Um, if you take a, a dry sponge and dip it in a bucket of water, it'll soak up water. If you take a wet sponge and put it in a bucket of water, it doesn't soak up very much more water, does it? Because it's already saturated. And CO2 operates the same way. There's a saturation level wherein the, the CO2, which is in the atmosphere right now, is mostly saturated uh, with respect to capturing of, of the frequencies of, of heat. And so on this curve right here, uh, this is the degree in uh, possible temperature change with increasing in atmospheric uh, carbon dioxide. This 1950 level is right here. 2008 level is right here. The maximum amount of temperature change you could get from the increase in CO2 from 1950 when the, the whole thing started to escalate for emissions and now is less than one tenth of a degree. This is basic physics. What about just making a, a correlation between CO2 and temperature. Uh, on this curve, uh, this is atmospheric temperature, uh, excuse me, atmospheric CO2 on this uh, side and surface temperature uh, on this side. So here's the CO2 curve, um, which has been increasing, been going up steadily, no doubt about it. From 1915 to 1945, we had global warming with no increase appreciably in CO2. So CO2 didn't cause that warming in this century, hotter than it is now. And then when CO2 was escalating in 1945 on, we actually had global cooling. The curve is actually going the opposite direction of the CO2 curve. If CO2 causes global warming, why do we have 30 years of global cooling when it began to escalate? Doesn't make any sense. 
It's only in this last uh, period from 1978 to 1998 when the two have coincided by coincidence. Um, we can also show that um, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere always follows an increase in temperature, not the other way around. The idea would be that if CO2 is causing global warming, CO2 would go up and then the temperature would go up, okay? But here's what actually happens, and these are, these are measurements that have been made by a group uh, of researchers in Norway. Um, the blue curve down here is temperature. Temperature's been going up and down, uh, as it does every few years, largely because of, of ocean changes. And this is the CO2 content of the atmosphere. In every case, temperature goes up and then CO2 follows. If CO2 was causing this temperature to go up, it should precede it, but it doesn't. It follows it in every case and by about the same amount. And this is for short-term changes. The same is true for long-term changes. So the conclusions about CO2 is that the amount in the atmosphere is minuscule. The total change is so small uh, that there is absolutely no way it can cause global warming by itself. It's totally dependent on water vapor, uh, and there's no correlation between global temperatures and CO2. When CO2 goes up, temperature does whatever it wants to do. Um, the comparison of computer model predictions of global warming, um, when you compare those to actual measurements to see if the models were right, they are totally inaccurate. The models are totally inaccurate. And I'll show you uh, an instance of that in, in just a minute. The bottom line is CO2 is not capable of causing significant global warming by itself. That's clear from the physics. Um, CO2 is a result of global warming, not the cause of global warming. As you increase the temperature, you increase the CO2 in the atmosphere because there's more that's given up by the oceans. Dr. Eastbrook, you, yeah. you used the term um, greenhouse effect. Oh, I'm sorry. A, a greenhouse effect um, is caused by certain gases uh, that will absorb certain frequencies uh, in, in electromagnetic spectrum, namely, namely heat. And so the idea would be that as um, heat is coming from the surface of the Earth upward, being radiated back into space, that uh, certain gases will tend to capture it, if you like, and make the air warmer. And that's why we have such a pleasant climate. It's because we have a lot of water vapor that keeps us nice and, nice and warm. Otherwise, we'd be cold because all the heat would radiate out in space. So think of uh, gases that capture heat is the easiest way to think of it. And I guess I, I raised the point because the, the greenhouse effect is not a negative thing. It's not it, what? It's not a negative thing, the greenhouse effect. The, the greenhouse allows effect. allows us to live here. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the greenhouse effect, the tendency of the greenhouse effect is for very small molecules, mostly water vapor, uh, to make the atmosphere warmer uh, by capturing of heat. Okay?